It's Firearms Friday at the Wyoming State Museum in Cheyenne. I'm firearms historian Evan Green, and I'm responding to a request from a commenter to talk about cartridges. And these are a selection of rimfire cartridges, and unfortunately they don't want to stand up tall, but we'll talk about them anyway. So this first one, this little guy here on the end, is a 22 short. And in 1857, Smith & Wesson created or manufactured their Smith & Wesson Model 1. It was a seven-shot revolver chambered in 22 short. And um, it was a black powder cartridge at the time. And it was fairly popular during the Civil War with officers and enlisted men. And you would think that if it's 22 short, well, you don't want to be shot with anything, uh, even a 22 short. So, okay, 22 short. The next one in line is a 22 long rifle. And that's probably the most prolific cartridge maybe in the world. There's been literally billions and billions of 22 long rifle cartridges and firearms that take the 22 long rifle, handguns and long guns and uh, very popular, very popular. It's valuable as a trainer, training aid for new shooters because the recoil and noise is negligible. The next one in line here is a 22 long rifle shot cartridge. And that's not particularly uh, effective at anything over five or six feet on very small creatures. The next one in line is a 22 Winchester Rimfire. And the 22 Winchester Rimfire was brought out for the Winchester Pump Action Rifle in 18, I think, 92, maybe 90. And it was an attempt to get higher velocity and more power than what we have in the 22 Long Rifle. But when new powders were developed, the 22 Long Rifle superseded it in terms of velocity, so it became obsolete. When I was growing up on the ranch in eastern Colorado in the 50s and 60s, one of my dad's friends had a Winchester pump action rifle, a hammer rifle, in that caliber. And even in those days, he had trouble finding ammunition for it. So the next one in line is a 22 Magnum uh, that has significant increase in velocity and power. And the next one here is a 17 Hornaday Rimfire Magnum. It's the 22 Magnum case tapered down to 17. And this is my go-to gun out on my property for the infestation of ground squirrels. I really like it because of its extreme high velocity it will disintegrate. If I miss and it hits the dirt, it disintegrates instead of ricocheting into the neighbor's house. So this is a 32 rimfire, uh, also a very popular cartridge. The next ones we're going to look at, this is a 56-56, oh, I'm sorry, 56-52 Spencer, and this is a 44 caliber Henry. The Spencer and the Henry were both cartridges that were uh, developed in 1860 for their respective firearms. In fact, it's said that Oliver Henry made the cartridge before he designed the 1860 Henry rifle, which used it. And these would, uh, the Henry rifle would take about 15 of these rimfire cartridges. Uh, the, the Confederates called it the Yankee rifle you load on Sunday and shoot all week. And there were a relatively small number, I've read 1,000, 1,100 or so, that were purchased by the federal government for the troops during the Civil War. But individual state militias, you know, in those days, if you were a rich guy and an abolitionist and had the money, you could organize your own unit, your own militia, and if you had the money, you could arm them and supply them. So some of those state militias were armed with Henry repeaters. The 
5652 Spencer. There were three calibers of the Spencer rifle. There was the original 5656, which was in fact a 52 caliber, and the 5650 and 5652 cartridges, which were 50 caliber. There was also a 5648, which was a bottleneck Spencer cartridge. I found it interesting that we have in the collection uh, several empty Spencer cartridges that were picked up on the Fetterman battlefield. And that was the fight in, on December 21st of 1866, when Fetterman's infantry and Grumman's cavalry left Fort Phil Kearney in northeast Wyoming to relieve a wood train that was cutting timber to, that would be used to heat the uh, buildings in Fort Phil Kearney and also as construction material. A man named Carrington, uh, Colonel Carrington, well, John Carrington was the commander of Fort Phil Kearney and According to witnesses, he instructed Fetterman and Grumman, relieve the wood train, do not go over Lodge Trail Ridge. So they went to relieve the wood train and were immediately being taunted by a group of Cheyenne, warrior, Cheyenne and Sioux warriors. Uh, legend has it, possibly true, that this was one of the first encounters when Crazy Horse was involved. He was one of the, that decoy group that eventually did lead the command over Lodge Trail Ridge. There's all kinds of opinions about why that happened. Grummond was known to be impulsive and not well disciplined. Uh, evidence of that, he was a bigamist. He was married to two women at the same time. And only weeks before the Fetterman fight, he had narrowly escaped being killed because he uh, followed another one of these uh, decoys, uh, American warrior decoys, and very narrowly escaped being killed. So my theory is because Grumman was mounted, his men were mounted, that Grumman went over Lodge Trail Ridge, got in the hot fight, Fetterman had little choice but to come to his relief, and uh, all 82 of that command were killed. The cavalry was armed with Spencer repeaters that they had borrowed from the regimental band. And what was odd to me is that there were two different calibers of cartridge cases picked up at the Fetterman site. One was the 5656, which was 52 caliber, and one was the 5650. 50 caliber. So why you would have two different uh, calibers uh, for the, basically the same firearms is, is uh, odd to me. But Carrington had been complaining for months that he didn't have sufficient ammunition, he didn't have any modern firearms other than those Spencers. Uh, Fetterman's, Fetterman's infantry was armed with Civil War muzzle-loading muskets, for heaven's sakes. So there were also two civilians, Wheatley and Fisher, who asked to go with Fetterman's detachment because they wanted to try out their new Henry repeating rifles. Well, they got an opportunity to do that, but came to the same end as everybody else in that command. It was interesting uh, that the bugler uh, in, in Fetterman's command, the 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 Almost all of the troops that were killed by the Native American warriors were punctured with multiple arrows. They were mutilated uh, after the fact. The Native Americans believed that you would encounter your enemies again in the afterlife, and if you mutilated them, they would be less of a threat to you at that time. But the, uh, the trumpeter was not mutilated. His body was not disturbed, and he was not punctured with multiple arrows, although he was very dead. And his bugle was flattened because he had used it in the last extreme as a weapon. And the Native Americans respected that level of bravery. So anyway, I got a couple other ones here. 
These are ones that I purchased. This is a 44 Ballard Long and a 38 Ballard Long. Uh, I've been attempting to identify some very corroded and damaged cartridge cases in the collection, and I thought they might be either one of these two cartridges. And sometimes you can't get a good dimension when you are measuring those damaged cartridges. You can't tell if they've been flattened or, or part, of, part of the mouth of the cartridge is missing. Turns out, no, the ones we have are neither one of these, but they are also examples of rimfire cartridges. So there you go, and all my 22s have fallen over, whatever. So if you've got questions, comments, want to talk Wyoming history, want to talk guns, I really value that from the, those interactions with the people who have supported this channel for the last five years and who have given me excellent information, helped me out. People have commented, they've caught my mistakes, they've corrected my mistakes, grateful for that because my, my commitment as a historian is not to perpetrate inaccuracies, and they've helped me identify firearms and have given me suggestions about what to do, including cartridges. So there we go. Thanks for watching.